Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the bagging and unsurveyable modeling. We'll first learn about the theory and motivation behind uh, bagging. And then we'll move on to uh, compare bagging model with decision tree and, and linear regression models. The decision tree is very related to uh, bagging. Bagging is just an improvisation on decision tree. In the last couple of videos, we learned about uh, the uh, the drawbacks of decision tree, and we will address the drawbacks uh, uh, in in bagging. Okay, so bagging is just combination of decision tree. Before we start, I've just given you just brief introduction of what bagging is all about. Okay, in the third part of this session, we'll just take an example and we'll solve using R. So that is also going to be interesting. We'll we'll see how bagging is is able to improve the model accuracy. The last part of the uh, session would be on questions. I'll give you some questions to solve and if you're able to solve, I encourage you to uh, send it across to me uh, and then I'll review and get back to you. So let's get started. So we'll start with the theory. Well, we have seen in the last couple of videos uh, on decision tree that uh, a single decision tree doesn't uh, perform well many times. The good thing about decision tree is that it is easy to interpret. It's easy to understand and explain to someone, but it underperforms. Uh, and the, the reason it underperforms is because it, it is just single tree that, uh, that is being used. This can be improved. Well, this problem can well be addressed. How do we address this problem? by combining several decision tree if you are using several decision tree um, to model the same data will be able to achieve higher uh, efficiency or better accuracy of model so the way to go about doing this is combine several decision trees for the same training set uh, which would perform better in the test data so that's the idea uh, behind uh, bagging okay so bagging is just a combination of several decision trees so that we can say in a nutshell and how is that uh, happening well when you combine multiple trees it is going to reduce the variance of your outcome okay so that is how it is able to uh, you know improve on the uh, improve on the prediction uh, ability of the model okay so we can see we can take an example to understand how you can combine uh, different you can combine observation to reduce its uh, its its variance i've got uh, three observations okay and you can take n number of observations the, the variance of each one of these observation is sigma square okay we have got three observations s1 s2 and s3 and the variance of each one of these observations is sigma square now, when you take the average of it, H1, S2, and S3, the variance becomes sigma square divided by n, where n equal to 3 in this case. Okay, So it becomes sigma square by 3. That means the variance has come down. right? It has come down drastically by combining or by aggregating. right? So that's what we have learned from the basic statistics that when you do the averaging, when you average observations, that reduces the variance now you know in in uh, modeling and you might have heard about what is known as bias variance trade off we are concerned about the variance of the result if you uh, take uh, you know different data set you will probably get different uh, predict uh, different uh, prediction predictive accuracy of the model and the variance could be more sometimes that is not a good thing so if the variance is more, then uh, you probably won't have a uh, very good model that will, uh, you know, give good accuracy. So the idea is to reduce the variance. So the same technique that we learned here can well be applied in the case of decision. Instead of a single decision tree, we can fit multiple decision tree and take the average of the outcome and uh, then use that as the final uh, model or final model for the um, you know training data set and that's what we uh, call bagging the technique of bagging so uh, this is important uh, we we'll call it as bootstrap aggregations so 
you might have heard about what is bootstrapping i'll give a, a very uh, brief uh, brief uh, idea about what bootstrapping is bootstrapping is nothing but uh, you know sampling from the same sample taking sub samples repeatedly from the sub samples okay so we have got a sample here and we are taking smaller samples uh, overlapping samples because you know the same observation could be in different sub samples from this bigger sample you know that's known as bootstrapping taking a subset of the observation uh, repeated uh, or or rather um, the same observation can be in the subsample, so it is replaceable. The observations are replaceable, and taking uh, several samples from uh, this bigger sample um, randomly is known as bootstrapping. Okay, and that will help us, you know, fitting a number of decision tree because you know, when you have multiple uh, samples, you can fit multiple decision tree. Right, so that's the idea. So, so just keep it in mind what bootstrapping is. And here's an example. We have got a data set of salary and education so target variable is salary we're trying to predict the salary of an employee based on the number of years of education now we have got uh let's say 15 observations so we can take uh let's say 10 observation uh, at random okay so we can 10 observation from 15 observation randomly and remember the numbers uh, the observations can be in different samples so they are not mutually exclusive, so to say. Uh, the observations can appear in multiple samples. So, we just take first sample, we call it as T1, and it has got 10 observations randomly picked from this main sample, this one. And we have got second sample T2 in a similar way. Uh, and all these observations are replaceable, by the way. And the same observation can be in T1 and T2 and T3 as well. So, and then we took the third sample. Now what we'll do is that we'll fit a decision tree on T1 and a separate decision tree on T2 and another one on T3 and then we will have the uh, you know the uh, the actual value and the predicted value for salary okay the actual value of course is known to us here and then we'll have predicted value so we'll have pred uh, okay let me show it to here so we'll have predicted value for model uh, sample 1 sample 2 and sample Three, right? We'll take the average of that and we'll call that as the final one. Okay. The averaging will give a better, uh, better result. Okay. So the idea is same, except the fact that when you use it in in uh, practice, we'll use a, a different way of doing it. Okay. So it's just an explanation. It's not the way it actually uh, is actually done. There's slight uh, vary, uh, deviation from from this one, and we'll see in the next slide. How, actually, how do we actually build? In reality, it's very difficult to take a sample, build a training set, and take you know do the average. So the way we uh, uh, the way we uh, do is is uh, take a bootstrap sample or use bootstrapping in order to repeatedly get multiple samples and you know fit our data. So it's entirely automated, and we will see how it is purely. Uh, automated way of doing and and we'll use r to do that so the idea here is to build separate prediction uh, model for each training set so i've taken three training set in the previous slide and you can take n number of training sets and fit a separate prediction model it could be decision tree it could be linear regression it could be logistic regression or any of these models mind it we're not only talking about bagging on decision tree we can we can do it uh, for linear regression and logistic regression as well and uh, we'll then average the result so this is the two step first you build a separate model for different training set randomly selected from uh, randomly taken from the uh, main uh, training set and then average the result so you build the model f1x f2x you know these are the uh, different models that you have fit to your data and you have fit n models to your n sub samples then the final model will be just average of that okay so that's the that's why it is called aggregation uh, bootstrap aggregation or, or in short bagging now it can well be used for classification now uh, we learned how to do in a regression problem but in classification, the steps would be same except the fact that instead of averaging, you take the majority vote. Okay, pretty similar to how you fit a decision tree, you know. 
in classification decision tree is different from regression decision tree right in classification decision tree you take the majority vote instead of the uh, average right so you take uh, you know let's say we have got three decision tree and we have got circles and then squares okay so uh, here the majority is let's say circle here the majority uh, let's say is is uh, square and here the majority is is circle right so for the same observation we have got two circles and one square okay so the final outcome will be taken as the majority one which is the circle right so that's the difference okay you take the majority count a majority vote instead of averaging in the case of classification but the steps are same you take random sample and then fill multiple sam um, separate models for the different training sets in reality it is very difficult to you know get a different uh, samples uh, ready in hand you'll only get one sample one big sample or one population data all the time so what you do is that you take two third and it's not a thumb rule though you take two third of the data every time and then aggregate the result depending on whether it's a regression problem or a classification problem. If it is a regression problem, then you go ahead with uh, you know averaging it out, averaging the uh, value. Or if it is a classification problem, you just take the majority vote. And the above method can well be used for linear regression, logistic regression, and decision tree. However, decision tree is always preferred in this case. But there is uh, you know there is no thumb rule as such. You can go and well add with uh, linear regression and logistic regression as well and see if you're, uh, you know, by taking multiple samples and multiple models and aggregating them is actually improving on your model or not. The next thing or the next uh, important thing to uh, know in bagging is how you do cross validation. Normally, if you're building a regression model or a decision tree, you separately do cross validation right build a model on training data and then you know uh, test your model uh, or validate your model in uh, test data and you do cross validation in that way uh, just to find out what is the test error right what is the test error and that's what we are interested in because that's what we need to minimize right so we can do that with out of bag uh, error estimation and you don't have to do it separately in, in back. You can do it uh, on just one go and build the model and then you know do the cross validation uh, at the same time. So here is uh, we have got uh, sample data and as I've said two third of the data is being taken for uh, model building and it could vary right. It's random. It could be anywhere you know the, this particular line could be anywhere here here. You know, it could it could take like if you're taking n number of sub samples, uh, so n number of times you would take two two by three uh, of these sample for model reading. So every time you will have one third of your sample as the uh, out of bag or out sample, so to say. So given that you are you are already you are always using a out sample data uh, in your model, you already have a cross validation done even while you are building the model, right? And that's exactly what is going to be used to calculate the out of bag error or out sample error. So for each observation, there would be v by three, uh, you know, out of bag errors, right? Because each observation uh, would have uh, would have an out uh, would have uh, you know one of these section is is left out, right? And that section you will have a out uh, sample error, right? And you aggregate that. You take the average of the uh, the out of bag error, uh, and that would be considered as the test error, right? And there is no need to do cross validation in this case. You'll get it in one, way. and we'll see that when we use R, you'll get the error right away. Then variable importance. This is also important to know. Okay, another important feature of bagging. Now you know that in decision tree when you are building a decision tree, the good thing about a decision tree is that you know which variables are very important. The ones that are at the top are very important, right? 
and as you go down in the tree you will get uh, lesser important variables right that's how you rank order important variables in your data or in your decision tree model but in bagging you cannot visualize this you cannot have this tree in place because you are using multiple decision trees you cannot visualize the way i have visualized this is a simple decision tree so in that case the EG uh, or the advantage of decision tree is now lost. So we have compromised on the interpretability of uh, decision tree just to get a better accuracy. So now there, there is a uh, trade off between accuracy and interpretability. Now we have compromised on interpretability because there is no tree as such now, but we have increased on the accuracy. That's what our uh, the motivation, right? However, you can. Uh, you can easily get the most important variable from your model. Okay, and how is that done? Um, well, for a regression problem, you use a matrix called RSS, and and for classification problem, you have Gini, and these two matrix will be used to rank order variables uh, used in the bagging model. So once you are done with the bagging model, you can use you can get uh, the most imp uh, important variables by you know, ranking all the variables used in a model through one of these metrics, whether it's a classification uh, problem, then Gini would be used. If a regression problem, RSS would be used. Then let's take a case study to understand. So we learned the theory, and one thing to remember is that uh, bagging is just a combination of uh, so many decision trees. That's what you need to keep in mind. That's the only takeaway from the theoretical part. Now let's take an example to understand. We'll take the library ISLR uh, because there is a data set called car seats. I've used the data set in the decision tree problem in my previous video. You can watch that video. Uh, the link to the video is there in the description section. Um, and then I'm going to uh, uh, load the, um, okay, let me show it to you. So I'm going to load the um, package random forest. Well, if it's not installed in your system, just uh, go to packages and then install it first before loading it. Uh, and that's the package uh, I'm going to use to build a bagging model. I'm going to take the data set car sets. So let's see what's there in the data. We've got sales of the car sets and there are several uh, explanatory variables. Um, there are 10 of them, 10 explanatory, that's the target variable, cells is the target variable and it's a continuous one, right? It's a continuous one that you can see. So it's a regression problem, right? It's a regression problem. So we'll uh, try to predict cells with the help of other explanatory variables, okay? Income, advertising, population and so on. There are 400 observations and 11 variables. Okay. One is target variable, rest 10 of them are the uh, possible explanatory variables. So before we start with the bagging model, let's first uh, build a decision tree model because we need to compare whether a decision tree, uh, whether a bagging model uh, is actually improving on the decision tree or not. So we'll, call, we'll load the uh, tree library. That's what uh, we're going to use for building the decision tree. So we'll use the function tree and dependent variable or target variable is cells and we'll all the other uh, you know, explanatory variables, like 10 of them, right? And the data set we are using is car set. And we have taken 200 observations, 50% of that. We have got 50, right? Total is 50, so, so total is 400. We are using 200 in the training data set to build the model and rest for the test data set. Uh, and then once that is built, we are predicting using predict function. We are predicting the target variable uh, in the test data. And then the next step would be to find out the root mean square error. How do we find that? We just subtract, uh, you know, uh, predict um, uh, minus the the actual uh, target variable from the test data, right? So it's like predict minus actual and you square them, take the uh, mean of it, take the mean and you would get the uh, the 
test error right I test error and that's the matrix through which you can compare two models right the one that is giving least test error least test error is the best model right the test error that we are getting here is 4.7 I'm not going to show you the result from this entry you can always you know try it out yourself the code is in front of you um, all I'm interested in is what is the test error and that is 4.7 so I need to see if the bagging model is actually improving on that or not. And when I'm visualizing the uh, the predicted values and the actual values, I'm seeing this data, and it seems to be not a very good fit. And let's see because there seems to be you know higher variance. Let's see uh, if there is an improvement on this or not with the bagging. So let's see if what is. If a bagging model is actually improving, uh, you, know, you should have been in the previous slide. So first we are, you know, getting a training and test data using sample function. We're using 1200 observations in the training data set, and in test the rest of the observations are there. So we'll fit a, ran uh, a bagging model using the function random forest, the target variable cells, and we'll use all the uh, variables in place. The data set is car seats. And we'll subset it for training data set only. And uh, remember, we talked about knowing the importance of each one of these uh, you know, explanatory variables. To know the importance, you have to use what is known as importance equal to true. If you don't want that, you can you can simply remove this option. Otherwise, just keep it. Okay. Now, once you have run this uh, model, we are seeing what is there in the result. Now, the results shows that the number of variables tried at each split is 3. So we, are, we haven't specified how many variables are to be used for split explicitly. It is using 3. Okay. And the number of trees it is taking, that means number of samples, so there are 500 you know, random samples through bootstrapping has been used and 500 decision trees have been used to um, you know, uh, do the prediction and then you know, it has been combined. All that has been automated within random forest uh, function. Okay, uh, so imagine you know if you do it manually, you know coming up with 500 uh, random samples from the main sample and fitting 500 uh, decision tree, and then using the uh, aggregation is is a daunting task. You just have to use a function which is already uh, doing the entire thing. Uh, the mean square residual is 3.21. So what was the mean square error? Okay, so this is on test data, so we can compare. So let's see what is there in the uh, test data. So this is on training data, right? Yeah. So we can't use training data test error, training data, data residual error for comparison purpose. Okay. So let's do a prediction. So now we have we have built uh, the model using uh, bagging using the function random forest. And then we'll use the same statistics which is there in the variable fit to do the prediction. And we'll use the test data, right? Test data is something that is exclusive to the training data. And then once we predict, we just will just plot the actual and the predicted value. And this is what you see. This is much better fit than what you have seen, right? Previously. So this is not so good, right? But here you can see it is much better fit and you know it, the variance has come down drastically. You can see it is smaller, right? Compared to uh, what we have seen previously. And the, if you take the uh, test error rate, it is 2.6. So what was the test error rate uh, previously? It was, you know, 4.7. So it is 4.7, right? If I remember correctly, let's go back to the slide. It is 4.7. So the test error rate was 4.7. It has now come down to 2.69. So the model performance has improved drastically because of uh, because of use of bagging uh, or multiple decision tree to do the prediction. Once that is done, okay. So another thing I forgot to uh, mention you is that. You can actually use how many uh, variables to be used. You know, you, you remember uh, in the previous slide we didn't use uh, how many variables to be used at each split, and by default it took three. 
by default it took three so by using the uh, you know keyword m try you can specify how many variables is to be used and that could make a difference you know you can always try with different uh, numbers and you you would get different results and the one that gives you the least uh, test error is to be uh, selected finally using the uh, function importance and uh, in, in the bracket uh, and the the, the uh, you use the uh, variable in which you have the model statistics and you will get uh, the important the rank ordering of the variables okay and how do you know which one is the best the one that is uh, having uh, that is most important for your uh, for your uh, model or for your data is going to be selected by two matrices okay one is a percentage of change in the mean square error and uh, node impurity okay so i'm going to explain you what is uh, percentage of change in the mean square error that means if you remove one of these variable how is it going to affect the mean square error so if you um, if you remove com uh, comp price from the model it is going to increase the mean square error by 13.70 so it is very important variable because it is if you drop that variable it is going to make or it could make the model worse it is going to bring down the performance by a large quantity which is 13.7 right and then another important variable is price if you drop this variable the uh, percentage increase in mean square error is 45 percent that's a quite big number so that's important variable uh, and and self loc is also important because that is also bringing down the mean square uh, bringing up the mean square error if you drop that variable so you can actually plot with respect to the ranks and it is going to give you or you can actually interpret better so this is how the variables have been ranked the most important variable is this one followed by price advertising comp price and so on okay so uh, yeah, and you can use one of these metrics to compare variables okay? and that's important because that's one of the lacuna that you have in bagging that you cannot visualize the model unlike in decision tree where you know it is very easy to know which one important which one of the variables is so important the one that is at the top so we use this particular matrix all right now we saw how bagging can be used to improve on the model accuracy now this is an assignment the two simple assignments for you assignment one is take a classification data I take a regression data in the previous in the example that I have shown you. Take a binary target variable data, and then use decision tree and bagging to classify the way we have classified and compare the result. Okay, we have done it for uh, regression. Uh, I encourage you to do it for classification. You know, the steps would be same. Uh, just build a decision tree, check the uh, test error rate, and then use a bagging model. And I check the test error rate and compare the test error rate uh, for both these models and see if bagging is improving on the prediction accuracy. The assignment two is uh, use a linear regression model for bagging purpose. Instead of decision tree, go ahead with linear regression. Okay, and do it manually. Don't use any automated procedure. We the way we have used random forest function, right? Uh, so fill multiple linear regression model and take average of them. When you do it manually, you probably can't, you know, take so many of them. Of course, you can write an automated function by yourself. Just take, you know, 10 or 20 models or maybe 50 models, 50 random samples uh, through bootstrapping, and then fit linear regression to each one of them and take or aggregate your result and see if it has improved your, your model or not. And you can use our email ID. To let us know uh, your uh, assignments and uh, we will review and get back to you with, with the feedback. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to us, please subscribe and also please visit the website which is there in the description section of this video. Thank you.